Delegation. I invite the next participating delegation, Indonesia, to address the court, and I call Her Excellency Ms. Retno Marsudi to the podium. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, distinguished members of the court, I left, I left my T20 meeting in Rio de Janeiro to stand before you today on behalf of the government of the Republic of Indonesia to express the solidarity of the Indonesian people on a matter of supreme and grave importance a matter that strikes at our fragile humanity. I stand before you today to defend justice against the blatant violation of international law that has been committed by Israel. We have all witnessed the ongoing humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza and the following escalation throughout the region, which have emboldened a global call to address the root cause, the illegal Israeli occupation on Palestine. Israel's unlawful occupation and its atrocities must stop, and neither should it be normalized nor recognized. Mr. President, members of the court, it is clear that Israel has zero intention to respect let alone abide by its international legal obligation. The Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, even said, and I quote, nobody will stop us, not the Hague, not anybody else, unquote. This is also evident in Israel's action in Gaza, as it is continuing its indiscriminate campaign of annihilation against civilian in Gaza. Apparently, the death of almost 30,000 lives is not enough for Israel, as it is close to launch another strike on Rafah, once the only gateway for life-saving humanitarian assistance to Gaza. No state should be granted a free reign to do anything they want against weaker states. This is why we have international law. This is why we need to uphold it. The role of ICJ is central to safeguard what the so-called rule-based international order. There is a big hope from the international community. I repeat, a big hope that ICJ delivers a favorable advisory opinion to the interests of justice and humanity. Mr. President, members of the court, the hope is on this court. Against this backdrop, we all assume a collective moral duty to furnish information on the question submitted to the court. Mr. President, members of the court, my statement today will be divided into two parts. First, on jurisdiction, and second, on the merit of the case. First part, on jurisdiction. Indonesia maintains that the court has jurisdiction to render the advisory opinion, and there is no ground to declining for declining to exercise such jurisdiction. This has been clearly elaborated in Indonesia written statement and written comment. Now I will focus on rebuffing the argument of some states, suggesting that rendering an advisory opinion would somehow undermine the peace process. While the court has made their opinion clear on this matter, allow me to further stress three arguments. First, there is no viable peace process to be undermined. Israel has been consistently obstructing 
a negotiated two-state solution. This is in line with international law and relevant United Nations resolution. Israel has even been circumventing negotiation through numerous strategic pretexts. With such strong resistance from Israel to stop its colonial project and its fait accompli unilateral action, no peace process will validly bring a just, lasting, and comprehensive solution. After all, negotiation with someone holding a gun against, head, against your head is not a negotiation at all. Despite this rhetoric on, rhetoric on peace, successive government of Israel has openly expressed their abandonment of the peace process, including by declaring the Oslo Accord null and void. Just last November, Prime Minister Netanyahu even boasted that, and I quote, I'm proud that I prevented the establishment of Palestinian state." Unquote. It is no wonder that Israeli officials of all levels have been openly ignoring the calls from the UN Security Council to settle this issue peacefully and abide by its international obligation. Along with these attitudes, Israel only has been pursuing a one-sided solution without engaging Palestinians, let alone addressing their interests. Indonesia submits that this confirming Israel has never been interested in any peace process. Second, the request for advisory opinion is not intended to decide on a final solution to the conflict. A comprehensive, just and lasting solution should only be achieved through direct negotiation between the parties to the conflict, not one imposed from outside or by one party. Rather, the request is intended to seek the court opinion on legal question asked by the UN General Assembly within its competence. The court should only render its opinion on the legal consequences arising from the ongoing violation by Israel and how they should affect the legal status of the occupation. The question should be understood as a request for advice to facilitate the General Assembly in devising necessary action within its function. Third, the court opinion will positively contribute to the peace process by presenting additional elements of the law for a comprehensive resolution of the dispute. A genuine and lasting peace process can only be achieved if it is consistent with the international law. Thus, the court opinion is very much needed. By clarifying the relevant legal rules, the court opinion will help in resolving the stalemate that has impeded the peace process. In addition to this positive impact, the court's opinion would be useful to guide the future step to be taken by the United Nations and all states. Thus, Indonesia submits that there are no ground to dismiss this request on the basis that it will risk fundamentally delegitimizing any future prospect of peace process. Mr. President, members of the court, my second part is on the merit of the case. Indonesia has made clear its legal argument on the question posed to the court as appeared in our written statement. I will begin with the continued denial of in 
inalienable right of Palestinians to self-determination. In its 2004 advisory opinion on the wall, the court reasserted the Palestinian right to self-determination is no longer an issue. This confirmed the long-held belief of the international community, including as expressed through various UN Security Council and General Assembly resolution, that the Palestinian people are entitled to self-determination. Let me reconfirm Indonesia's position in line with the court view that the fulfillment of such right is an erga omnes obligation. In other words, all countries, I repeat, all countries have a legal obligation to respect that right and to contribute to its realization. Consequently, any endorsement or recognition of Israel's policies or practices that obstruct the right to self-determination of the Palestinian shall be unlawful. Mr. President, members of the court, in addressing the issue of the right to self-determination to Palestinian, Palestinian, it is also important to remind ourselves that the occupation has become an instrument to suppress such a fundamental right. This court, in its opinion on the wall, as well as the UN Security Council and General Assembly in their resolution, have reaffirmed from time to time the status of Israel as an occupying power. The occupation has been prolonged and enabled by Israel's series of breaches of its obligation under international law, including international humanitarian law and international human rights law. Now allow me to elaborate the following. First, the Israeli occupation is a result of an unjustified use of force. Therefore, the occupation should be unlawful from the beginning and continues to be so. The use of force by Israel could not be justified under the guise of self-defense. It is also in breach of the principle of necessity and proportionality. It is indeed against the prohibition of aggression, a peremptory norm of international law from which no derogation is permitted. Second, the illegal annexation of the OPT. As an occupying power, Israel is legally obliged to keep its occupation temporary. This has been violated by Israel as it has been attempting to make its occupation permanent and also to annex part of the occupied territory. As a matter of law, under no circumstances shall Israel be allowed to annex any part of the occupied territory. The UN Security Council in its various resolutions has reaffirmed the established principle that acquisition of territory by war is inadmissible. It is an absolute principle that applies even in circumstances where war has been resorted to lawfully, such as in self-defense, which is certainly not the case of Israel. Israel's transgression to international law does not stop there, as it has declared that Jerusalem is the eternal undivided capital of Israel. Not only are these actions unlawful, they are also highly prejudicial to the prospect of a two-state solution. Third, continued expansion of illegal settlement. The policy of Israel in transferring its own 
population and forcibly displacing Palestinians from the occupied territory contravenes the fundamental rules of the international humanitarian law. This policy is a clear violation of the Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention to which Israel is a state party. It is worsened by Israel's pursuit to change the demographic composition of the West Bank. This policy demonstrates Israel's complete disregard of international law and also shows the intention to make the situation irreversible. Fourth, the apartheid policy against the Palestinian. As an occupying power, Israel is legally obliged to act in the best interests of the Palestinian. Instead, Israel has been reinforcing its prolonged occupation by imposing military orders on the Palestinian population which are not applied to Jewish Israeli settlers. The existence of separate legal regime that are applied exclusively on different groups of people is a textbook upper height policy that constitutes a grave violation of human rights, particularly crime against humanity. Having said that, it is clear that the continuation of such apartheid regime is paramount to another breach of a peremptory norms of international law. Mr. President, distinguished members of the court, I wish to elaborate on the legal consequences arising from these policies and practices by Israel. This should begin with respect to fundamental rights of the Palestine people, particularly the right to self-determination, which has been systematically denied by Israel. The court must pronounce that Israeli occupation is illegal as a whole. It follows that we must bring this illegal situation to an end. Israel must cease completely, unconditionally, and immediately all of its unlawful action and policies in the occupied Palestinian territory. With the continued presence of Israeli forces in the West Bank and Gaza, it is impossible to see Israeli compliance with its obligation. Thus, it is imperative that Israel must withdraw its forces. Given the illegal nature of the occupation, Israel withdrawal must neither be done with precondition nor subject to any negotiation. They must withdraw now. I repeat, they must withdraw now. Israel should also be obliged to make reparation both to the state of Palestine as well as to the Palestinian people. Mr. President, please allow me to recall a legal maxim which states that no one may enjoy legal benefits from illegal action. Therefore, Israel attempts to make its occupation permanent shall never be a valid ground to claim a legitimate title over the Palestinian territory. In line with this, all states and the United Nations must not recognize the illegal situation arising from the violation of international law by Israel. All states must not render any assistance to the maintenance of such violation. Moreover, all states and the United Nations should also ensure Israel compliance with its obligation under international law. Mr. President, members of the court, I would like to conclude by underlining 
that no country is above the law, that no country is above the law, and the sanctity of this court must be upheld. Indonesia believes that this legal motion is also a motion of global conscience. It should not be another item on the list, another proceeding to dismiss, another call to go unheeded, ignored blatantly by Israel. Never again means never again. We founded our current international system with the conviction that every, you, every single human being, I repeat, every single human being without exception is protected by law. Every single human being without exception is protected by law. Thus, let us all contemplate upon this question. Should the international community continue allowing Israel to manipulate the use of international law to justify its illegal action against the fundamental rights of the Palestine? For Indonesia, we shall not. And once again, the hope is on this court, as the court is the guardian of justice. I thank you very much.